All right there, YouTube. We're back with the old red here. Got a little project to do on this here today. I'm gonna change the bushings in the front leaf springs. So this front bushing on this side is getting quite a bit of play in it. I've got a few of them that take grease hard. But this one's definitely the worst when you jack it up off the frame and you can see there's a good bit of play in that bushing there. So we're going to start with that one. And if that spring eye is good and it's not egged out or something like that, then we're good to go ahead and continue. I've got all the new bushings, but if that spring eye is damaged, I'll have to uh, order some new leaf spring. All right, so here's the basic setup here. I've got the truck jacked up by the frame so that there's not any weight on the steer axle. I've got a couple jack stands under there. I've got a floor jack under the axle so I can independently raise and lower the axle itself. And I've got the wheel and tire off so that I can drop this lower. I've also got the front shock removed so that that doesn't prevent me from dropping this spring down. Then what we're going to do is we got to take these, there's a bolt on each side that runs through like this. We got to take those out and then knock that center pin out. Okay, so these are the two bolts. They run through each side like this. And then uh, we've got those out. They came out without much fight. And then we've got this pin in the center here. We got to drive this out. All right, so knock the bushing out, and as I was afraid of, you can see from about here to about here how there's wear in the spring eye because it actually ate through the bushing. So, you gotta order new leaf springs. So, not a whole lot more I can do right at the moment here, but go order leaf springs, and when they come in, we're continuing on this project. I suppose I should go ahead and check these frame brackets here too. Make sure we don't have any issues there. Just finished ordering new leaf springs. Should have them in a few days. But we're going to go ahead and uh, take this off, take this pin out. Make sure that these are good. I don't anticipate a problem there. Yep, that looks fantastic, and that's actually a updated needle bearing style, and that looks great. All right, so I think my new leaf springs are supposed to be in here either later today or tomorrow. Now, U-bolts are not reusable. Some people reuse them, but they're not supposed to be reused. So I need to get some new U-bolts. Now, there's a place here locally that has all the dies so you can basically bend up any u-bolt that you want so i'm going to take one of these u-bolts off go run it down there get uh four new u-bolts made now i prefer to try to get one out without cutting it so i have that one i can just i mean i can just give them the measurements and the uh style of the top here and and they can bend it up but i just like to get one off hole and then uh, run that over there tell them I need four just like it and if we do cut it off it's not that big of a deal as long as I've got the measurement of the length but we're gonna go ahead and see if these will come out or not
try a fresh battery. That's not happening. Okay. All right, so we got our U-bolt out gonna go around and get some new ones all right so I got my new u-bolts here these guys here are my go-to place for uh, anything PTO or driveline related they do a lot of other stuff as well but they got these bent up for me ah, get out of there come on there we go so new u-bolts bent up uh, I think they were I want to say an inch Longer. Ah, let me take these. All right. We're like an inch longer, but there's plenty of thread, so that's going to work just fine. We just have to zip the bottom off after we get these put in. Yeah, whole spacing will work. All right, so we got that taken care of. Set those out of the way for right now. I drove by while I was going getting those and new leaf springs aren't in yet, but maybe later today or tomorrow so i'm gonna go we're gonna do both leaf springs but i don't think i really want to take the other side apart till i know i got everything and it's all the right parts and whatever but but we're gonna go ahead and cut this u-bolt off take this spring out i gotta change this bushing here because uh the new spring should have new bushings in the the eyes there if not, I've got the new bushings anyway, but they're going to be a bush style bushing. And uh, this set's actually a roller bearing style. It takes a different pin diameter, which doesn't match what I got. So, so we're going to have to uh, knock that bushing out, put the new one in, take this leaf spring off. Okay, okay, now to drive this bushing out of this bracket here, just got a bolt, a couple washers that the outside of them match up to the outer race here. And uh, one thing you want to be careful with with this side style bushing is there's actually two different uh, P 
pieces here, actually three different pieces. So you got your main sleeve here, and then you've got two bearing cages here. So if you end up pressing on just the center, you're not gonna knock this outer one out and you'll be sitting there wondering why your new bushing doesn't fit. So you gotta make sure that you get that outer sleeve out as well. And these washers do do hit that outer sleeve there, so I should just be able to use this as a driver, knock that out. All right, so we're just putting just a little bit of heat in this. I mean, we're not getting this thing like glowing hot or nothing. Maybe, uh, probably shooting for 180, 200 degrees. Probably not even necessary. Just should help getting this uh, bushing pressed in here a little bit. Would be kind of nice just to unbolt this and take it over to the shop press, but. I don't want to put any more force into knocking this bushing in than I have to. Just want to be sure that I don't deform the bushing or anything like that. So a little bit of heat helps out. We're just using a little propane torch. You know, like I said, we're not going crazy. The you know, we're not smoking the grease off of this thing or getting it cherry red or anything like that. Just just a little bit of heat. Then we're going to use a piece of flat metal to drive this in. Probably get it started just. Alright. Perfect, just like that. See how easy that went in with just a little bit of heat on there? I mean, this isn't that hot. I can. I can hold my fingers on there for about two seconds. All right, so I got new leaf spring here. It's just sitting on here for the moment. I did notice uh, one discrepancy here. Everything seems to be right center, center, you know, and all that. But here they've got this stack on top of the leaf spring. On the old leaf spring here, the stack's on the bottom of the leaf spring. But these leaf springs have are quite a bit flatter. These have more arch in them. So I gotta make the call whether to swap these to the bottom side like they were before or leave them where they're at. Now I really can't have this truck sitting any lower than it already was. I know a lot of you guys would like me to bag this thing and Put it so the bumpers drag in the ground it just doesn't work for the type of freight that i haul and i really don't want this truck to sit any lower than it already does so i gotta decide what to do there actually i don't need to put the u-bolts in yet if i just put the uh put the shackle and the bushing and stuff in here 
I could actually set weight on this and see where, without putting the U-bolts in, see where it sits. If it sits too low, then all I got to do is put some C-clamps on the spring pack here. Drop the axle down, take this nut loose, and swap these pads to the bottom. So I think that's what we're going to do. Alright, so I've got it jacked up by the axle. I've got two bottle jacks under here. And I've got it jacked up so that I have the exact same measurement from the concrete to the axle on both sides. And then I took a measurement from the top of the axle to the bottom of the frame on both sides. Remember, we've still got the original leaf spring in that side. We're going to be changing that one too, but I've got a quarter of an inch higher on the driver's side than I do on this side. And this bump stops like three quarters of an inch closer to the frame. Obviously that bump stops stacked up on top of there, where's yada yada, whatever. But we've got a quarter inch shorter on this side from the top of the axle to the frame. So I suspect that because this side is lower, that when we change the other spring, both sides will come down. That side's probably carrying a little more weight than this side is right now. Because their distance from the axle to the ground is the same on both sides. It's probably trying to twist the truck just a little bit. So I wouldn't be surprised if we're a half an inch lower once we get both springs swapped out. Now, two of these pads measures three quarters of an inch. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking take two pads from the top, move them to the bottom. Then I should sit about a quarter of an inch higher, which the new springs will probably settle a little bit. So I wonder if I should do three. But typically new springs, they do settle in a little bit after you drive them a bit and they're right a little bit lower than what they are when you first install them. Well, it's close to the end of the day here now. These didn't show up till right at the end of the day. So I think I'm gonna sleep on it, and decide what I wanna do. I mean, a quarter of an inch, I'd say just leave it. But like I said, once I swap that side, I wouldn't be surprised if both sides then come down a little bit more because that spring's probably carrying a little bit more weight because this spring's lower. Plus, I suspect that these springs will settle a little bit. So I'm going to sleep on it, and uh, we're coming back to this first thing in the morning. And hopefully I'll have a plan of what I want to do there. And Okay, so I actually left this sitting overnight with the jacks under the axle and all the way to the truck. Sitting on the axle and the springs. And overnight, this new spring did settle another quarter of an inch, and that's before it even get cycled going down the road so i've decided i'm going to take three from the top move them to the bottom and leave one up here i think that's going to work out pretty good i think i'll end up plus or minus a quarter of an inch when it's all said and done so that's what we're going to go with i've already got this nut cracked loose all i got to do is take this center bolt out I've got the springs clamped together, so I'll take the center bolt out. I'll swap three of the pads to the bottom and put the bolt back in.
All right, so this is all back together here now. If you look over the other side, I got the other side done. Now this is one of those things that whatever you do to one side, you should do to the other side. Actually, uh, everything looked pretty good on the other side when it all come apart. All the bushings were, I, they had a little bit of wear in them, but they were fine. Leaf spring was fine. There wasn't any damage to any of the eyes or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, we're just gonna just go ahead and change it all. Don't be like the last owner of this truck. Uh, there was a different style and type of bushing in this side as there was in the other side when I did kingpins on this truck. There was a different kingpin set in this side versus that side. Obviously somebody that didn't believe in doing suspension stuff in pairs, which is not the right way to do it. You should always do suspension stuff in pairs. I do still need to final torque the U-bolts. Other than that, this is all ready to go other than I just got to grease everything. Now, I don't actually have the torque spec on these U-bolts, but it's pretty easy to do. Uh, all I got to do is figure out what size U-bolts these are. So we're measuring 730 thousandths, so we're we'll round that up to 750, so three quarters of an inch. Pull out my pocket confuser here and see if I can get that to not wash out. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but a U bolt that's three quarters of an inch torques to 315 foot pounds. And that's an easy way to figure out uh, torque spec on a lot of different things. Just look up the size and the type of the bolt, and uh, you can find a torque spec for it. Now, you do have to be careful on some things. Uh, it's not always accurate. Like, for example, the blower on my Jaguar. You know, it, it's bolted down with bolts that are probably capable of torquing to 100-something foot-pounds, and the torque spec on them is like 12. So there are instances where you got to know what the torque spec is, but in this application of u-bolts you can torque according to the size and type of the fastener that is a workout Okay, those are torqued. Still got the other side to do. I think I got my rowing machine in exercise today. Whew. All right, so we're all done. Everything's greased. U-bolts are all torqued. Oh, on U-bolts, they're designed to stretch. That's why they're not considered to be reusable, because they stretch and deform when you torque them. Now one thing I thought was kind of interesting, maybe you guys will, maybe you guys won't, but before I torqued these, they were 720 thousandths. After just being run tight with a impact wrench, and if I measure them again now, after torquing, Six hundred ninety-seven thousandths. So we lost what twenty-four thousandths of an inch in diameter from the stretch of the bolts when we torqued them.
All right, so we've got about a thousand miles or so since uh, we did this repair. Definitely need to get them. Definitely need to get them uh, U-bolts retorqued as soon as we can make it back to the shop. But truck's riding nice, driving nice, no issues. I'm happy with where the truck's riding. I'll uh, cut in a clip from the outside there, but definitely happy with how the truck's riding. Uh, no problems really. So we're gonna call this repair a success. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe down below. Thank you. Have a great day.